The early signs at AS Roma are that things are going well for Mourinho. He's happy to be back in Italy with, quote, real supporters, as he put it, and he missed those Italian press conferences where they talk about football and tactics instead of controversies. When Roma announced he was their next manager, it came as a surprise, but the high hopes of Roma supporters surely won't be. Hey, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV where today we'll be discussing the very, very early ways in which Mourinho and some of Roma's other managers, board members and executives are changing the Eternal Cities Club. Again, these are the very early, early ways in which they are changing on the pitch and behind the scenes. This isn't the finished product yet, neither are we trying to say that it is. Thankfully, I have Wayne, aka Wayne and Rome on Twitter who has worked with AS Roma themselves, Italian Football TV, and Gentleman Ultra on all things AS Roma, so I'm happy to have him along to help out, and happy to have One Football involved with another video. So thank you to One Football for sponsoring this one. One Football, of course, has the best app to keep you up to date with the teams you care about, like AS Roma, the competitions you care about, like Serie A, and the players from around the globe. With their custom tailored homepage, you'll be in the know with the latest breaking news. You can track the transfers of your favorite clubs. You can follow matches live with their live tickers, watch videos, highlights, and much, much more. All within the app. Use the link in the description for a free download of One Football on Android or iOS. Help yourself to great football coverage, and you'll help out an independent such as myself in the process. All right, thank you, One Football. Off to Rome. AS Roma is certainly an historic club with a massive fan base, a team that is basically ever present in the top flight in Italy. They've been relegated just once in their history in 1951, but upon returning to the first division in 1952, they haven't gone down since. Despite their time spent in Italy's top league, trophies have been hard to come by, at least in comparison to the big clubs who they are often mentioned alongside. Clubs who typically have had more spending power, comparatively to Roma's, though that may have changed somewhat recently. As of now, when it comes to league titles won, AS Roma sits in 8th place with 3, the last of which coming in 2001. It's because of things like this, you know, the few titles and the circumstances of the club, that you hear iconic quotes like this from iconic players like Francesco Totti. Quote, Winning one league title at Roma, to me, is worth winning 10 at Juventus or Real Madrid. Every title means more, given how hard they are to come by. The last one being their ninth Coppa Italia in 2008. But when it comes to the league, they are always competitive but never really the favorites in the last decade or more. Including last season, when Paulo Fonseca, fresh off of some great seasons with Shakhtar, tried to wield his magic, but failed to do so. All promise, but a deficient product in some cases. Wayne, I know this is a, a broad question in a sense, but looking back at Fonseca, what exactly went wrong with him at Roma? Because he came into it very promising after what he had done at Shakhtar. Yeah, and he did impose a few of those tactics and at first when Fonseca came to the club I was imagining someone who is going to play a high press 4-2-3-1 very much the same way that he played in Ukraine and I thought that maybe Fonseca's tactics would outdo the veteran Italian tacticians who've been around the block right and he was going to be something new however it just started to seem like he couldn't adapt in a way around that unfortunately like he got figured out really quickly so we started off with the flat back four with the high press so more like wing backs and it just wasn't working out like Spirazzola was suffering and then as time went by he actually did transition to the 3-5-2 Roma started to play better it started to click a little bit more it seemed like for the players we had they were in more natural positions and it wasn't so much trying to shove like something square into something round However, as time went on, it's like we hit a plateau. I looked at it and I said, you know, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He plays some champagne football at times. He's smart. A lot of the things he said, they did resonate with me. And I, I thought that with time and with different players, that he was a coach that could get Roma back into Champions League places. However, he wasn't getting points against any of the big teams. And I mean any. And even like Napoli or Milan. We were really struggling to shave points off. So I, I think everyone started to get, get give up a little bit on him and he seemed like he needed something new. I'm not sure if it was a player or a change of scenery, but he wasn't doing so good. It's an opposite personality versus what we see in Mourinho. Because in Roma, you need a dominant personality. 
if you're going to, I don't want to say not as an alpha, because I do think Fonseca has alpha qualities about him, mm -hmm. but you need to show that not only to your team, but also in front of camera and with media or else those corners of the map start getting closer and closer and it becomes really consuming. Look the reporters in the eyes, tell them, no, you know, get a grip or the writers and say, this is nonsense. So it takes a really strong commanding personality. It wasn't Fonseca. It absolutely is Mourinho. It was time for something new. It wasn't a change in tactics. It wasn't if just adding, you know, one more center midfielder. But to get to the next level, he wasn't what Roma needed. And it was somebody like Mourinho. So I don't feel bad at all, really. Yeah, so that's that's actually really interesting you bring that up because that's not something that I necessarily knew about Roma. So this is very enlightening that if you sort of show any sort of signs of weakness, it's, it sort of sounds like the job almost eats you alive in a sense. So... You know, speaking of weaknesses, let's look at the squad and, and what you guys had last season. When you look at that and who Fonseca had at his disposal, where were some of the biggest deficiencies or weaknesses, would you say? On the outside, I thought we struggled finding a consistent winger. We brought El Shadley back in the winter. He didn't really look like the same player that left for China when he came back. On the outsides, we did improve a lot. Karstorp became a prominent player after his loans. I think many Roma Tifosi fans had a, kind of like given up on him just because he was out of the picture for so long. So that was like a really pleasant surprise to get Karstor back in the fold and become a main player. Smalling was out injured a lot. Mancini mm. wasn't a... He, he had some really great moments, Mancini. Um, Kambula was hurt a lot. Ibanez was still really raw. So center backs across the board were just not doing great. In the defensive midfield role, we had Darbo step in he was 19 and when he when he first started playing with the first team and he did really good but that was towards the back end of the season center forward we lacked Jekyll was old i know there's this romanticism with roma fans that you know they felt really bad that Jekyll was left i felt it was two years too late i was like bro i i, I had just had it he was older i know his hold up play was great uh but he wasn't pressuring the ball he was missing sitters and i was like for the money that he was being paid it was disheartening. I was getting really frustrated, especially as uh, Juventus as Ronaldo. Napoli had invested big bucks in Osimen. Ibrahimovic was dominating for AC Milan, and Atalanta was just scoring like 10 goals a game. And here I am with 35 year old Jekko, who doesn't want to run, is missing easy balls. And I'm like, come on, man, you know? And across the board, to answer your original question, we just didn't have the quality. And so you have all these deficiencies that you mentioned in the wide areas, the back line, maybe you could have used some more depth. Do you think that those were addressed this summer or are there still areas that need some attention? Yeah, I do. Uh, and two of those were kind of emergency situations because from what I understand, management didn't see Jekyll accepting that move earlier on the season. They didn't go into the Mercato thinking that they needed to assign a new striker. They knew they needed a new striker. They didn't know that they were going to need a Jekyll replacement. And when um, Spinazzola went down too, that complicated things a little bit worse. I think Pinto did a great job in finding a solution quickly. And that was Mat Matias Vigna, who came over from Brazil. He struggled his first Serie A match. He got um, taken a little bit of advantage of against Fiorentina in the first match day. But then in the second uh, match against Salernitana, which was this past weekend, that game was really like a deadlock. The whole first half, we had something like 82% possession, but we couldn't get a ball in. So yeah. in comes this new guy who replaces our key player and he puts in a really hard, accurate cross to Pellegrini and then we open up the goal and, you know, and that starts it. And then we go to two to three to four and then we start to dominate the match. Aside from that, though, it is an added striker. Shomorodov has come in. He played for a year with Genoa and Mourinho specifically asked for him. He's Uzbeki, an Uzbeki striker. You're not going to hear that too many times, at least in no. Serie A. And the guys looked awesome. His profile is unique. He's tall. He can take the ball, though. Like, he can beat you one-on-one -on -one if he wants to. He has a really good shot. He can finish if he plays inside the box, outside the box. A super unique profile on him. And another addition, which, uh, as we say, like a grand colpo, a big, a big purchase, was not so much the money, but the return of Zaniolo, I think, is mm. something that speaks volumes guy's motivated he seems serene he's like added so much muscle since he's done both his acls his return is a signing within itself and then of course who could forget the man of the hour tammy abraham yeah so 
who came in. I don't, I don't, that's the move that I don't think Roma expected to make. And once Dzeko left, they were like, what do we do now? And I think in um, a press report I read today was that the ownership, the Freakins, did not expect to spend this much in the season. Yet, because of certain players leaving, coming and going, it necessitated a big number nine. Someone who could get the ball in the back of the net. Someone that was dependable, too. When you have a club that is massive within their respective country, but struggles to win titles, what do you do? Well, if you're Dan Friedkin, the figurehead of the family that has owned AS Roma since 2019, you go after one of the most successful managers of all time. The special one, or the specialone, as depicted in this image. But like AS Roma, you could argue that Mourinho is in need of lifting as well. Like AS Roma, he has so much to give, but hasn't been able to reach the heights he's capable of for one reason or another when you take stock of his last few jobs. Of course, there is a lot of nuance and context to dissect, which we won't get into here. United and Spurs weren't exactly sure things. And in even saying that, he's still the only manager to win trophies at United since 2017. But three sackings in the last five and a half seasons doesn't just go out the window. But the frustrations in England led him back to Italy, where he last achieved something incredible, winning the treble or triplete with Inter Milan. How did his signing come about? Well, according to Mourinho himself, quote, Roma contacted me the same day I was sacked by Tottenham. They really wanted me. It was almost instantaneous. I was sacked in the morning, then they contacted me in the afternoon. The man who got into contact with Mourinho was Thiago Pinto, who we will get to later as he has played a big role in this new look AS Roma side, but let's go back to May 2021. On that day it was announced, I believe there was also a rumor saying that Sari had actually signed with Roma. What was the general reaction for the AS Roma supporters? Because I feel like Mourinho still has a pretty good reputation in Italy. Shock. Uh, yeah. No Roma fan saw that coming. I mean, everyone was like, okay, Sari will come in, we'll play Sari ball, maybe we'll get Jorginho or another regista, someone who can you know, apply to his tactics, and Mourinho, uh, Mourinho steps up and it's like, what? It was not picked up by any news, there's nothing, not even in Rome, if you check those papers, absolutely nothing. So the Roma fans were like, one, shock, but two, how did we just sign this caliber of a coach? So we're not accustomed, the Roma fans are not accustomed to one, spending big on players, nor coaches. It's always been like this kind of conservative, like. We want to be there, but just over here. And it's like with Spalletti or uh, Ranieri, uh, Garcia. It was always like a little bit of a gamble and not this surefire, okay, we just signed the manager who's won everything. Because we're not in the same financial situation as um, a team like Manchester City or Paris Saint-Germain. It's, it's a little bit different. We don't have the same type of media rights, which can help, you know, teams from the top to bottom buy good players. So it's... Even still, I'm like, wait, Mourinho is the coach of Roma? It's crazy. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah, it is. Especially, you know, to see him crop up in Italy again. I was really excited about it just based off of how he had left Italy. And I think that it, I think that, you know, and it, all the things that he said in the media sort of point to that, that he almost enjoys being there more, it seems like. Like he was saying to the media that I like these press conferences because I can actually talk to you guys about tactics instead of controversies and stuff like that. Now, if history was to teach us anything, the trends that they've offered when it comes to Mourinho in particular is that his team starts well, reach their plateau in the second season, and then it all falls apart in the third season. That's the common narrative out there, and that has sort of become a self-fulfilling prophecy in some ways. But as a product of that, Mourinho became the guy that can guarantee you titles, the only club that he has failed to win a trophy at since leaving FC Porto in 2004 has been Tottenham, where he was robbed of that opportunity by getting sacked right before the League Cup final. So far at Roma, it's safe to say the results have been good, but that's just half the story, as their overall play has been excellent, with the team taking to their new manager's approach faster than most teams in the past. Defensive solidity and at times electric attack. How has Roma changed so far? Let's ask Wayne. It was immediate. Every preseason, if you go on forums, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, they'll tell you there will be concerned fans because it's like, I don't think the players have adapted to the tactics yet. I don't know if they know where to be. They seem like a mess. These are comments you can take any year from the past 20 years of Roma and social media, let's say 20 years you know, since people have been able to put their opinions across the internet 
it's the same same comments every year <laughs> however this year completely different right out of the bat the players seemed like they knew where to be they knew their positionings their locations it was so quick and not only that the pressing was there the transitions were there is it the finished product of course not of course let's, let's be realistic however from the start of things it's just been such an immediate difference and i think part of that too is you have players who are buying into this coach and i think that's really important especially like you said you know it didn't work out in england and there were a couple different times you know he went here he bounced around a little bit rome is going to be different he feels comfortable like you've mentioned he is a coach who is super based on tactics and i won't take that away because there is a misconception that in england it's not as tactical or i think that's an old stereotype yeah. however i think that going toe to toe with the other italian coaches in syria that he's like relishing that opportunity and the players not only buy in but are part of a long term project here where it's not just about Mourinho, month six, year one, but I think there is an understanding that this is gonna take time. And him being able to have this as like a pet and start this fraternal cycle in Rome can lead to some really wonderful things that the Roma Tifosi have missed since 2001. Trophies missing, pragmatic approaches to matches, uh, players who, with their coach, are willing to bleed for the shirt which see this not as just a vacation but a full stop as opposed to someone who's like i'm 34 years old i'm not going to name any names i'm a winger <laughs> and uh it's the end of my career i want you know a, a nice two million dollar per year three-year contract i'm gonna hang out maybe i'll score a couple goals no basta like that's over <laughs> i can't have that not if we're gonna be serious and really compete that is the type of mentality approach that we're hoping and there's all the signs that is being implemented right now i think more and more we are seeing how much of a role the people in the backroom staff play not that you know a good director or general manager of football contributing to the success on the pitch is a new idea in any way but i feel like they were underappreciated for a long time until now we've moved towards the time where those pulling the strings behind the first team squad and behind the manager are getting more and more credit for the successes of a club. AS Roma is no different. Following the Friedkin takeover in December of 2019, Thiago Pinto was brought in from Benfica to be the new general manager of football at Roma, and alongside the new owners and the manager, things all seem to be moving in the right direction now. Thiago Pinto officially came into the role as general manager of football at AS Roma in January of this year. And when they were announcing him, Dan Friedkin said that, you know, his passion for the job, um, he has a forward thinking mindset and attitude, he, he wants to win, etc. These are all consistent with the new ethos, quote unquote, at Roma. So Wayne, what is this new ethos? And when did it come into play? Was it when the Friedkins took over? It's been little by little from the additions that the Friedkins have made. And from what Pinto has said recently, it's players who are committed for the shirt, who really want to be part of this project, who buy into everything. And that word is thrown around so often, right? project. But are you committed to it? Are you making those investments? Are you working with the manager and the director of football, getting in the right players who suit the coach? Are you making the improvements in the training centers and really bringing in nutritionists and a new medical board? And we're seeing all those things, which is why it's not just a a glamour word anymore like oh we'll be good one day no because we're making those necessary steps so that's what you see right now and pinto could do nothing aside from sign primavera, primavera players to the first team and a guy here and there and he would still be considered a saint for what he's done this past summer getting rid of the dead wages so dead wood i didn't want to use that word but i can't think of anything more else you know they're not they're humans i don't want to call them dead wood it's rude but um, the players who have just been using Rome as this vacation and getting them out of here, you know, it, it, the, the job's not done yet, but he did a hell of a job. Would you say that, you know, Tiago Pinto and some of the other backroom guys, they deserve as much, uh, this all sounds very early to say, but they deserve as much credit for sort of revitalizing AS Roma along with Mourinho? Yeah, sure. At least giving us the chance to dream at this point, yep. you know, not having a... Uh, we're not starting out with our feet in the mud. I think just being able to start in a clean slate is more than anything. The entire video is going to be prefaced with us saying, 
it's early, but we're just looking at the early signs. If there's any part of the pitch that when you're watching AS Roma, you're still feeling a little bit uncomfortable about or anything like that, is there still other areas that you think need improving? Yeah, that, that destroyer defensive midfielder who seemed to be mm. a hot commodity this Mercato, not only for Roma, but a couple other teams who wanted somebody who could step in, win the ball back, maintain possession, get it further up the pitch, hit a long ball. This was really the Friedkin's first like legitimate Mercato. It's also coming off the back of COVID. Yeah. You know, we spent the most in Serie A, I think the fifth most in Europe. I don't feel a certain way. I'm like, oh, why didn't they, you know, get the plug in the midfield? There's opportunities there, but I think that in the winter and definitely by next summer, that would be like the one player you want to go and get. Because otherwise, it seems like we seem pretty good. Yeah. Man, it's, it's weird to say that. So it's definitely an exciting time to be a supporter of AS Roma. Of course, these are the early days in the Mourinho life cycle, which are always the best days. Everyone is wrapped around his finger and charmed into believing that this will be the man to deliver success. Often time he has been. And call me a fool for buying into it once again, but I am excited to see what he can do at Roma. I'm jumping on the train. A club with so much potential, with a great team behind Mourinho and a talented squad. Whatever happens, you know it's going to be entertaining. I want to thank Wayne once again for coming through to help me out with this video and provide his expertise. Give him a follow on Twitter, which is linked below. It's absolutely worth it for you to do so. As for me, I thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, drop a like to make the algorithm happy or a dislike if you thought it sucked. <laughs> My name is Adrian. This is Rona TV and we'll catch you later.